tenemos una fe resuelta es que están vivas todas las fuentes genuinas de España. España ha venido a menos por una triple división, por la división engendrada por los separatismos locales, por la división engendrada entre los partidos y por la división engendrada por la lucha de clases. Cuando España encuentre una empresa colectiva que supere todas esas diferencias, España volverá a ser grande como en sus mejores tiempos. These were the words that rallied thousands of young men and women of all classes to join the Falange, the Spanish fascist party. But unlike in Germany and Italy, fascism was not a mass movement in Spain. It would constitute one of many groups in the Nationalist Front, including monarchists, Catholics, and traditionalists, and its doctrines would greatly differ from those of the other three. The Falange had always called for a revolution as a part of its doctrine and ideology, and it was not really considered right-wing by the nationalists, although the left didn't view it that way. General Franco, the supreme military commander and head of state of nationalist Spain, was not a fascist. But he would use the fascist party to attract financial and military aid from Mussolini and Hitler, who feared the possibility of a communist takeover in Spain. In response, Stalin sent military aid to the Republic to counter the threat of fascism. I hate wrong. But the pacifist, non-interventionist policies of America, France, and Britain, fearing the outbreak of another world war, would cause these nations to abandon the Spanish Republic. However, many of these country citizens who believed fascism to be a threat volunteered to fight for the Republic. Most of these volunteers were communists. All of these foreign interventions in the Spanish Civil War would complicate the revolution. The rest of the world has turned its back on you, okay? They, they, they refuse to sell the Republic arms, okay? These are capitalist, these are capitalist countries. They're capitalist countries. And if you want their help, you have to moderate your slogans because you're scaring them away. Camarada Durruti, a los lectores de New York Herald les gustaría saber si ustedes, los anarquistas, se consideran a las órdenes del gobierno o si por el contrario están enfrentados a él. Se trata de aplastar para siempre al fascismo y ello se hace falta a pesar del gobierno. Tal vez un día no lejano este mismo gobierno tenga necesidad de los militares rebeldes para destruir el movimiento obrero. Luchamos por la revolución, no esperamos ayuda de nadie. Les mostraremos a ustedes los bolcheviques rusos cómo se hace la revolución. En su país hay dictadura. En el ejército rojo hay coroneles y generales, mientras que en mi columna no hay jefes ni subordinados. Todos somos iguales en derechos. Todos somos soldados. Yo también soy un simple soldado. Se acusa a los hombres de su columna de haber caído en un cierto desorden. Caos, dicen algunos. Los militares profesionales tienen dificultades para hacerse respetar. ¿Usted qué opina? Los burgueses siempre tienden a identificar la libertad con el caos. Hemos organizado el entusiasmo, no la obediencia. Cada hombre, cada mujer, es responsable ante sí mismo y ante los demás. Esa es nuestra fuerza. The Republican Front was an alliance of many political groups. At the center was the government of the Second Republic. Anarchists, Trotskyites, socialists, and workers' unions formed militias to fight the nationalists and spread the revolution. But these unorganized militias of the Republic would prove to be no match for the professional army of Spain and the tanks and bombers that Hitler provided. As Soviet aid to the Republicans increased, so too did the power of the Spanish Communist Party, which called for an end to the revolution and the reinstitution of military hierarchy. Compañeros, listen please. I have to go to the command post for a very important meeting with the general staff of the column and I say very important because we are going to discuss about our integration 
in the new popular army. There is no choice. The government in Valencia says no more militia and say we all must become part in the new communist-led popular army. Okay? So if we refuse, they continue to withhold arms, to keep arms from us. The creation of the new army with its uh, saluting discipline and military hierarchy will destroy the revolutionary spirit of the people. Okay? And it's exactly what Stalinists expect. What? But the Republican government would no longer tolerate the uncontrolled freedom of the revolution. What's going on? Guardias de Salto. The police from the old days. And now they are back. No guns for us at the front. And here in Barcelona, the police have guns sticking out of their arse. Those militias that didn't join the popular army were forcibly disbanded. Es esto conspiración, coronel. Sí. Es mentira. Sí, tú lo sabes, es mentira. In Barcelona, fighting broke out between communist and anarchist militias. These conflicts would cripple the Republican Front as political groups declared strikes and withheld resources from each other. Este es el pan de cada día en la España de Franco, el que guardamos en nuestros graneros. Los rojos mienten. In nationalist Spain, General Franco would consolidate the various factions by promoting the elements of tradition and instilling a sense of security in a time of chaos. Anyone who opposed Franco's regime would be labeled as a Republican. Some were accused of being communists. Others were accused of being anti-clerical. Whatever names these people were given, Thousands of political prisoners would be executed by both sides during the Spanish Civil War. By 1939, the Nationalists had won the war, beginning over three decades of dictatorship under General Franco. 500,000 people died in the Spanish Civil War, and the atrocities that were committed have not been forgiven or forgotten.